brought back a lot. Familiar? Yeah. Familiar and um, very nice. Rang a few bells for me too. But, but what? Do you still love Dixie? It's a fair question. A little too fair. Yeah. Look, if you still love Dixie, you can tell me. Do you still love Edmund? Come on, Brooke, fair is fair. You're the one who brought it up. No, I didn't. I never mentioned Dixie's name once. You did. All I did was kiss you. Look, you can't suggest that I just sail off into uncharted waters with you and not even mention her name. In the first place, they're not uncharted waters. And to answer your question, Dixie has been in my life for a long time. And I know that Edmund is a big piece of yours. You know as well as I do that once once you love someone, you can't just turn it off. You can't just turn around and walk, walk away from it and, and forget about them. It's not the way it works. But does that mean they're supposed to be able to dictate every move we make from now on? No, not every move. Okay. And what I'm suggesting is maybe it is time to move forward. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I know it's going to be painful. It's going to be miserable. We're bound to run into them. It's a small town. But as far as I'm concerned, forward is the only way to go. Forward is a very general direction. I know what Edmund does to you. Dixie does the same thing to me. Every time I see her, it hurts. What's the hype about? What did it ever get us? A lot of pain and sleepless nights. And night. regrets and fights. And bending over backwards time and time again, trying to make things work. There were good times too, Ted. I know. I remember them. I do. All the times you wake up and you look across the bed and you think you're with somebody that you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with, but you know what? You turn around and whack, hit you square in the face. You're right back to emotional hell. You tell me, do you like living your life not knowing whether or not it's going to fall apart? Nobody is going to give you any guarantees. No. No, they won't. But a little commitment would be nice. A little indication that Dixie was as willing as I was to work things out. Brooke, after everything you and I have been through, why should we make ourselves martyrs for something called true love? Dixie and I thought we had true love. All it did was make us miserable. Maybe it's time for something new. For something more. And who knows? Maybe, given a little perspective, you and I might one be able, like every might one day be able, like everybody else in the world, to just look back at this and, and, and smile. You know, and refer to things like times before Edmund or situations between my Orsini period and, and my Dixie era. Who's to say that, that you and I aren't supposed to have a better future together? I think there are a lot of people who have already voiced their objections about that. Okay, so... Why don't we just forget that? Look, I tend to listen, all right? I tend to listen when the topic is my life. You know something? A couple nights ago, I started listening to somebody else, somebody new, me. Nola worked long and hard to teach me something about confidence, something about maturity. <laughs> Thank God some of it stuck. I can see that. Lesson number one, there is always a time to move on. And there's usually not some big neon sign sitting there telling you where the exit is. You just have to use your good sense and know where to make the turn. Brooke, if you and I were ever supposed to fall in love, there is never going to be a better time than now to figure it out. No, you're right about a lot of things. I keep trying to forget what... Edmund put me through. I mean, I, I would go to bed 
at night with a with a peaceful, calm man, and I would never know who I was, who he was going to be in the morning. I mean, he would have nightmares, or or he couldn't sleep, or he or he would disappear before dawn, and and I was always waiting for the other shoe to drop. And inevitably, it was always it would drop where it would do the most damage. You think he's got any more shoes to drop? He swears not. And I know that he believes that, but I think there's a very badly damaged bottom line, and that's trust. Which is important. You know, the last time that you and I were together, I ended up with a broken heart. Touche. I know I was there. Yeah, being casual often has a kind of way of turning the corner into painful before you know what hit you. You weren't possessed. You didn't run off to some faraway place. I mean, I knew for you that it was Dixie. But the last time we both saw the end coming, came and I left. And you were great. I remember dreading telling you that I was leaving you for Dixie. And when I did, you were terrific. There was no drama, there was no angst. You just let me go. How'd you ever get so wonderful? <laughs> Everybody who dumps me asks me that. Look, this time, whether we like it or not, all our cards are on the table. All of them. You tell me if this feels right. Because to me, it does. A toast. Okay. I can deal with that. Terrific, because there is a long-standing tradition of toasting in the Orsini clan. And what you toast with is critical. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. See, of course. Well, there's kind of an art to it. See, you can only you can only toast the harvest at certain occasions during the year. It's very, very superstitious. And when you do, you have to swirl the wine, you make the toast, and you spit it all over the guy next to you. <laughs> I'm not serious. Why didn't I believe that? Well, like it's not the harvest or I'd have to prove it to you. And, of course, there's, um, there's always your peace on earth, goodwill towards men toast. I mean, those have their place. So, what does tonight call for? Tonight is very special. Tonight, it's just got to be to the guest of honor. <clears throat> Not yet. Okay. Okay. How's this? Here's to Brook English and to going slow. That's nice. Salud. Oh, no. It's true, my heart. I cannot breathe. Where the hell did you come from? The same place Dixie did. I told her she was wrong, but uh, I guess she wasn't. What are you talking about? Dixie was here. And she saw you carrying on with her. What are you talking about? Dixie's never been anywhere near this house. Yes, she was, just a little while ago. And she got a real eye full of all your hanky-panky on the patio and an ear full of, oh, whatever, Brooke. Brooke, please. Don't do this. 
Excuse Mama, me? Mama, come Look, on, stop. Look, I mean, That's I enough. can understand why you would be tempted. You got Jamie, and then you got this perfect papa coming home from the battlefield. It all makes this pretty picture and everything. But you know as well as I do that Tad and Dixie belong together. And they got to fix things up pronto. Well, stop. You have got to go to Dixie right now and explain this whole mess. Are you kidding? What was Dixie doing here in the first place? She came here to patch things up. Who told her where to find me? Well, you told her you had moved, and I didn't know that your address was any kind of classified information. And you just thought you'd send her over without so much as a phone call? Tad, I didn't know that you were getting involved in all the touchy-feely with Brooke. You know, you and Dixie, you had your wires Who crossed, and I just thought that I didn't want to wanna leave it yourself. all. Huh? Well, I'm sure Dixie didn't. I know. I'm, I'm sure as hell that I didn't. Well, yeah. sometimes these okay. things just need a little nudge. That's well, congratulations, all. Mama. Thanks to your meddling, you just nudge things right off a cliff. I hope you feel good about yourself. Oh, well, I mean, it, I don't mind for me, but Dixie is the one you have got to go to her. She is in pain. No, no, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to lock the gate after you are gone, and then I am going to buy a dog possibly a gun because i'm going to make sure damn sure that nobody ever waltzes in here again without right. an, a, an invitation especially you all right all right i'm sorry i should have phoned first i was rude Mama, i admit listen to me if you ever ever again involve yourself in my business without being invited i will disown you oh what do you, do you mean you can't disown your own mom i can and i will Okay? Go on. Go on. Oh, everything is so out of control. We all, we all just meant well. Nobody wanted for anybody to get hurt. Sorry. I apologize for that. Opal was right. Are you kidding? I don't mean not about interfering. I just mean she's right. She's really right about about a lot of people getting hurt Brooke, and for no reason. To wait a minute. I'm in the privacy of my own home with a special guest. Nobody should get hurt. That shouldn't hurt anyone. I saw your face when she told you that Dixie was here. Is she the only one that's hurt? I'm not gonna start lying to you, not now. But the fact that Dixie was here... It bothers me, it bothers the hell out of me. I wish that it was... I don't know, I wish things had happened differently. I, I, I could have told her. True. <laughs> Wait a minute. This isn't what you think it is. This is not about revenge. I didn't think that it was. I just wish that it hadn't happened. Do you want to go to Dixie? Do you want to explain this to her? It would be understandable if you did. You're amazing. Look, now's the time to do this, all right? Before she has a time to replay everything that she heard a hundred times in her head. I'm not going anywhere. There's nothing I could say that would change what Dixie heard. All that I would do is tell her that it was the truth. I... I'm not going anywhere because I am right where I should be. Where you should be? Where I want to be. Right here, with you. Not what I expected. Well, yeah, I'm today. sure you were just chomping at the bit to uh, go over fabric samples, huh? I think you know that's not true. You know, if we were smart, first remodeling job we would have done in this place is to uh, build a wall around it, maybe even a moat. Who knows, maybe the evening would have gone a little smoother. I'll do some research on moats, okay? Uh, I'm sorry for... My mother's eccentricities. 
Eccentricities, that's, uh, that's kind of code for Nutty's a fruitcake and meddlesome as hell. Hey, you know, I have a couple of fruitcakes in my life, too. Listen, if you'd ever think about uh, getting involved with a character like me, by all means, take all the time you want. I just hope it doesn't take too long. Thank you for um, the wine and the company. Oh, well, come on back. There's plenty more where that came from. And you know where to find both of us. You know that date that you were talking about? I'd love to. You just say when. When? Glad you're out to have dinner with us tonight. Oh, yeah. Gave me an excuse to shave. It's a chance to know Erica's family better. I, I want us to be close. Just like the Brady Bunch? <laughs> Come on, buddy. I know what you're doing. You're trying to take pity on your bachelor brother. Well, forget it. I don't need a social director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd rather be at home alone with a frozen pizza and last month's uh, copy of Temple, right? Some things never lose their appeal. Is it like solitude. Is it, is it killing you to come out and have a good time for a change? <laughs> is it? <laughs> So, we having fun yet? Well, Brooke, uh, Dad, looks like we all had the same inspiration. So it seems. Yeah. If you'll excuse us. Your reservation, sir? Uh, two. Martin. Oh, yes, Mr. Martin. Ms. English, the table's ready. Great. This way, please. I'm getting out of here. Right? Andrew, wait. Look, look, you, you survived Bosnia. Surely you can survive tonight. I was on enemy territory then. I don't have to take it on my home turf. Yeah, but you're only delaying the inevitable. This is my timetable. I'm not going to sit there, break bread, and make a little chat. Just call me uncivilized. Sir. I'll call you more than that if you let Brooke English run you out of here. You can't desert your friends, your family. Watch me. Please tell your mom and Mr. Davis that I got a bug. I just got sick to my stomach. Oh, Edmund. Oh, Dimitri, stop it. No, no, just let, let him go. I'll make his apologies. No, 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 no regrets. Not tonight. I didn't even know he was back. Uh, yeah, he showed up at work this morning to turn in a story. The one that moved you so much. He didn't mention it. I didn't think it was worthy of a headline. Listen, it's perfectly okay with me if you want to eat somewhere else. Well, I think it's a little late to close the barn door. The horse is already bolted. Mm. Although Erica seems determined to rein him in with some sugar and a velvet glove. It's incredible. When I was 16 years old, the only things I worried about were acne and returning my father's car with a full tank of gas. <laughs> Life's a little more complicated now. Mm -hmm. Now we've got ex-friends and ex-lovers running all over town. Bombing into Edmund is bound to be inevitable at work. But I'd say this was an all-in-all -all public hit and run. And despite the firm set of your jaw, I'd say that a little damage was done. Brooke, if seeing me is going to be psychologically detrimental, then I would maybe say you're that right. you're at risk as much as I am, Ted. Hardly. I can steer around Edmund with no problem. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what if we walked in here tonight, me on your arm, and you came face to face with Dixie. She's already seen the two of us together. We were blissfully unaware of that, Ted. What I'm saying is, what if you walked in here tonight with me and Dixie made a scene and said she wanted you back? Dixie already had her chance when we were back at my place. Like Edmund just now. I didn't do anything about it. I hate to say it, but maybe you and I aren't as irresistible as we think. Hello? You in there? I was just thinking about, uh the night of Erica's engagement party. Edwin proposed to me. He proposed? Well, actually, it was more of an ultimatum. Why didn't you say anything? Because it's not customary to announce an engagement if there's not going to be a wedding. Did you turn him down before or after I walked out? 
after. You are one of the reasons that I turned you down. Terrific. You and Edmund, Brian and Dixie. Play my cards right. If I play my cards right, I got a real future as a home record. Dad, come on, don't say that. We've brought so much life back to our house. I feel it, Jamie feels it. It's a shame. But Edmund can't reconcile himself to the fact that you are a part of our lives and you're a very important part. Well, Nola always taught me that there's room for everybody. I want you to know that I appreciate all the sacrifices that you've made to be with me. Likewise, I want you to know that I'm willing to do the same for you. Look, you don't have to give until it hurts, all right? You just have to do what feels right for you. See, that's the funny thing. The less you ask, the more I want to give. And the more I get to know you, the more I want to know. And I don't give a damn who's watching. Save it, Erica. I'm not going back to the party. Okay, fine with And you me. can spare the cracks about Brooke, too. Okay, any more taboo subjects, or may I have a word? Look, I, I know something about what you're going through. Oh, really? Well, that's just great. That's very reassuring, okay? Now go back to your party before Dimitri calls out the Russian wolfhounds. Don't dismiss me before you hear what I have to say. Look, you're not the only one who's ever lost anyone, you know? And they say that time heals all wounds. Well, it doesn't. It just makes you older. Oh, what did you lose, Erica? An account? An admirer? A fingernail? No. As a matter of fact, I lost... I mean, I was... I was... forced to give up. Precious gift. I lost my child. You know, when I was <clears throat> a kid, before I knew about death and taxes, the one thing that I could certainly count on was the back of Alf's hand just whacking me right in the head. That was it. I mean, even an arm's distance was too close with a temper like that, so I just learned that the only time I really felt safe was when I was alone. Well... Maybe that's why you're alone now. I mean, what started out as self-preservation, maybe that just turned into a way of life. Yeah. yeah. it's pretty ironic, isn't it? Your safe place doubles as a jail. I mean, you can you can see out, and, 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 and others can see in, and, and once in a while you can just sort of reach out and touch somebody on a certain level, but basically it's solitary confinement. And you still get hurt. Come on, break out of jail. Come on. Come back inside with me. Well, what did I tell you? Erica brought him back. <clears throat> Is that good or bad? I think it's good. At least he's not limping off to war like some Hemingway wannabe. I think maybe tonight is all for the best. Well, Edmund, thank you for rejoining us. Would you please take a seat? Well, you know, I gotta eat to keep up my strength. Oh, dear, I thought it was my charm that keeps bringing him back. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong again. Here, here. What can I do? Well, Mona, I think they're playing our song. Would you care to... Uh... Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. you excuse us. Sure. Surely. Edmund, you and I never did get our dance at Wild Wind. Yeah, I'm not really Fred Astaire these days, Erica. Of course you are. Don't be silly. You've got your cane. All you need is your top hat and tails. I'll be ginger. <laughs> Give him a whirl. You know what? What? You're about as obvious on this dance floor as you were outside. What are you talking about? This is a very feeble attempt to make Brooke jealous. She's going to see right through it. Brooke, is she still here? Isn't that funny how insignificant people just slip your mind? You know what? Marrying you is the best move my brother ever made. Well, thank you. As a matter of fact, that's why I really lured you out here. I would like to ask you a favor. Well, I owe you, so ask. Well, I don't know. Maybe Dimitri has mentioned it to you, but for our wedding, we're thinking of writing our own vows. 
My beautiful fiance has the notion that we should write our own vows. And I think Erica would really love that pseudo-tough, hopelessly sentimental style of yours. He might have mentioned something in passing. Well, the wedding is going to be memorable, and I would like our vows to be just as memorable. And, well, to that point, I happen to be on dancing terms with a certain Pulitzer Prize-winning writer. You want me to write your vows? Would you, Edmund, would you please? I mean, you're so talented, and you're so terrific, and I mean, of course, I would do it myself if I had time, but my schedule, you know. Anyhow, I can add my flourishes when you're finished. Would you please, oh, and please, I would consider it your wedding present to us. What am I going to do with that blender? <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you. Oh, I always liked you. Oh, you're an <laughs> angel. <laughs> Gotta hand it to him. I've never seen a, seen a guy do the foxtrot with a cane before. When Erica says dance, they dance. Obviously. I wonder what happened to his leg. He's in Sarajevo. His destination of choice when I rejected his marriage proposal. Bosnia? Why didn't he just get drunk? It would have been a hell of a lot safer. <laughs> I don't think safety is Edmund's top priority. Anyway, he, uh, he wrote a terrific profile for the magazine, and that's how he heard his leg getting the story. Sarajevo. It's impressive. Either Sarajevo or Pigeon Hollow. I wonder if it means anything that both our ex-lovers would rather go to war or banjo country than have anything to do with us. I think it probably means that we deserve each other. <laughs> <laughs> Edmund, is something wrong? No. No, everything's... Thanks, everyone, and Erica. Thanks. Good night, Evan. Cook, you look great tonight, as usual. <clears throat> Thank you. You seem to be enjoying yourself. Yeah, so did you. In this best of all possible worlds, all is for the best. Good night. We made it. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of going into town tomorrow and having t-shirts made of them. I survived my first date. I don't know. Or better yet, I survived my first, first date. And all no, I got was this crummy t-shirt. Oh, that's not true. I got a lot more than a crummy t-shirt. Oh, now, come on. Don't get serious on me all of a sudden. It's not all of a sudden. It's a big deal when you got a guy standing in front of your house who doesn't know whether to kiss you goodnight or go home. Better yet, wait around in hopes of an invitation to come inside for other things. Well, I think this should end the debate. Oh, excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Sandra, it's 
it's all right. That's a little harsh. You know, in the old days, the uh, parents used to come in and find the babysitter making out. Oh, here. I'm a grown man. I'm still getting caught. Um, was Jamie okay? Did he? Oh, oh he went out like a light after three stories. There Thank you are. You. Listen, I, I appreciate your staying oh, late. No that was nice. Oh, don't forget that Jamie has a plate Christopher Jones tomorrow. Oh, okay, okay yes. I marked it down. Right, thanks. thanks again. Cool. And the moral of the little story is... What? Don't play coy with me. You know damn well you invited me in this house to teach me one of life's little lessons. And what did we learn? Well, we learned that the hearts and flowers take second place to uh, bedtime bulletins and playdates. Well, that's very good. I think you should go to the head of the class. Thank you. No, come on. No matter what you might think, I did not plan this, but... Yeah. No, it is. It's, it's... Sure. You're guilty. You know you are. It's one of the first things that you learn when you're a parent. It's very hard to plan things more than five minutes in advance. Even a kiss. You never know who's going to walk in. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the mommy track. I mean, you want to stay up all night and drink champagne, and I have to make sure that there's enough milk for Jamie's cereal in the morning. Oh, well, by all means, if you're running low, please allow me to go out and buy some more. Let's not forget that we are also talking about my son who is sleeping in there. And believe me, I am not competing for your time or affection. It's a foregone conclusion. The kid's much better looking than I am. You noticed that? And just for the record, I would much rather drink orange juice from a cartoon mug than champagne from a slipper any day. And, as a matter of fact, in a domestic kind of way, I find waking up to the sound of snap, jackal, crack, <laughs> very sexy, I do. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. <laughs> really, sugar-coated cocoa crunchies. They're no known aphrodisiac. You do it for me. <laughs> you know, you know the old woman that lives in the shoe? Uh-huh. You could make her think that that is a split-level dream house with a thousand good miles left. No, on. wait. I think you should go. I am not trying to feed you a line. I'm not. I, I promise. Know I that. swear. I know that. That's the trouble. You just say and do it. All the right things. Well, obviously I'm slipping. Otherwise, you wouldn't be showing me the door. Tell the truth. Have you really got to get up early tomorrow? Are you just doing this because your mind's still, still mulling on the fact that you bumped into Edmund over at the, the Valley and Dining Room tonight? Or is it simply that you, you're not sure whether you want to do this? I think the better, better question is, why do you want to? I just had a startling insight. I'm almost afraid to ask. Well, you haven't asked me in because I've been acting like a first-class jerk. I haven't asked you in because I don't know what you're doing here. Oh, well, isn't it obvious? I mean, I see Tad and Brooke together, and I feel like hell, so I go looking for somebody else who's been similarly burned to share our feelings. I ring your door like the Avon lady from hell. I kick your teeth in, offer you a nightcap. What woman could possibly resist that? Well, it's an opening I've never heard before. Yeah, well, you won't hear it again. I'm, I apologize. I, I won't darken your door again. Edmund. Just wait a second. If, if misery really does love company, you've come to the right place. Come on in. I gotta straighten you out about. Tell me, Edmund. Well, you said that, that misery loves company. But I'm nowhere near miserable. You're not. Nope, far from it. Now, you see, you mistook my sarcasm and my detachment as a defense mechanism, but I'll tell you, the day that I need to defend myself against Brooke and Ted's all too obvious motives. Is today. <sighs> you can't sit here across from me and convince me that seeing Brooke and Ted together isn't killing you. No, I can't. You just hit it right on the nose. Why do I want what I want? I'm not sure I understand the question. Tonight was the worst case scenario. I mean, Edmund showed up, right? I don't regret anything. 
I'm still standing. A good time was had by all. I mean, as for me, I, I had a marvelous time. Brava! That just proves that your gray matter is getting a little perspective on that little gray matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. Unless, of course, I'm losing it. The same way I lost it in this room a little over two years ago when you walked away from me and you went back to Dixie. I thought we were okay about that. You were okay. You were not in love with me. But I still loved you. And now... And now... Here we are again, except we have a son sleeping in the other room. And you've left Dixie, and... And you charm your way back into my life, and... And I, I don't know what... After that, you know? I, it's just all these feelings are coming back, and they're so... They're too familiar, they're too strong. I don't know what I'm doing with you. I, I don't know if I'm on the rebound from Edmund or if I'm on the rebound from the old you. And you're afraid that I'm doing this just to prove something to Dixie or to Opal or the rest of Pine Valley or I'm trying to get close to my son? Anything but simply accept the fact that right now I just want to be here with you. The thought of history repeating itself scares me to death. You don't have to be afraid of me. I'm sorry, that must have been pretty tough for you to say. Well, by all means, uh, in that case, I won't gloss over it with some kind of a glib comment. I don't think that was our style anyway. No, it wasn't. We were always very honest. It was brutal, but we knew where we stood. Okay. Tell you what. You stand right there. Right where you are. Looking gorgeous. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go kiss my son goodnight, and I'm going to go home. But before I do, I'll make you one promise. I will always, always tell you the truth. Brooke, I know this is no time to be dropping by uninvited, but please, please, can I come in? What do you want, Opal? Oh, I started a family holy war tonight. I had no right barging in on you and Ted like that. No, you didn't. And I don't blame him for booting me right out of his life. I mean, I try to hold my tongue. I really do, but it just has a mind of its own. Now, Brooke, I don't want any bad blood between us. My family is my life, and I know how important you are to Ted. So please, please, could you find it in your heart to forgive me? You have not gone so far with Tad to watch Brooke and Tad just walk off into the sunset. Think about it. They're going to get burned, and so are you. But you can stop it. Now go get Tad. Sorry, Edmund. No. <sighs> this doesn't make sense. None of this. You and Brian, Tad and Brooke could go against the natural order. It's Tad. He's made his choice. Yeah, okay, fine. Ignore the whole balance of the universe, Dixie. Look, my plane was barely touching ground in Virginia, and he was with Brooke. Yeah, well, that's because you ran out on him. No, that's because he wants. Nobody knows what they want. Well, That's the problem. Tad is doing an extremely good imitation. You know what this whole thing is? This whole thing is about pride, okay? You and him, you both have so much pride. Well, one of these days you're going to have to ditch it and make the first move. Now, come on, Dixie. Why can't it be you? Was Tad right, Opal? I mean, did you send Dixie over to his house? Did she overhear us? Every single last word, yes. I'm just sick about it. And that's why my career as the town tattler is in the tubes where it belongs. No more cheerleading for Dixie, huh? We got too much to lose. No, from here on out, what happens will happen with no help from me. No, Opal, promises are all well and good, but who are you trying to convince? Me, Tad, or yourself? Aren't you really hoping deep down inside that eventually 
Tad and Dixie will get back together again. Dixie, why don't you just trade your pride in for love? Why don't I just throw my soul in for the bargain? It's not about what you're losing, it's about what you could get in return. You know what I'm going to get in return? I'm going to get a headache. I'm going to get a heartache, and I'm going to get a lot of misery. Ted is not just, just dating some woman. He's seeing Brooke. I go off to West Virginia for five minutes to get a little perspective on my life, and he picks up with the woman that split us up to begin with. It's different than it was before. How is it different? He's got a house now. Very nice, you know. He's putting down roots. And who is the first person that he invites over to entertain? Brooke. It's called payback, you know, because you were cheating on him. I was not cheating on him. You married Brian, okay? That's betrayal to him. All right? It, now, so, you know what he did? He just picked the, the one woman he knew would really stick it to you. Well, it worked. But if he's playing games like that, I don't want no, to have no, anything no, no. to do it's, with it. It's not like he's plotting to make your life miserable. He's just being human. And it's human to want to just give it right back, just like you got it. But you know what? You have an ace up your sleeve. Now, you should use it. Edmund, I don't have any ace up my sleeve. Tad does not love Brooke. He never did. Edmund, a lot of things have changed about Tad, and I think that might be one of them. No way. No way. Listen, you can't create love like a... like a perfect omelet. It's either there or it isn't there. And in your case, it's there. You have a history together. Nothing about that history matters. Oh, it's all that matters. Now you go tell him how you really feel, and you guys are going to be back together in no time. It's not that simple. Listen to me, it is. Dixie, you love Tad. Tad does not love Brooke, because deep down, after all the games are played, he still wants you. Now you can make it happen. Brooke, just to hurt me. I think he did. No. Do you know what I saw tonight? I saw Tad and Brooke together, touching, sharing private jokes, kissing. Now, I, I didn't want to stand there. I wanted to run. And when I finally got out of there, I was sick. And you expect me? To go crawling back to him? Well, no, thank you. Dixie, crawling is <clears throat> not always the worst thing in the world. Would you crawl back to Brooke? If it worked. I already have, and if it worked, I'd do it again. But I, I went to Tad. I told him that I loved him. I told him that I wanted him in my life. And it didn't work. He ran away. It's because he's jealous of Brian, and you're jealous of Brooke. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Brian and I don't have a child. Tad is playing daddy right now like it's a new toy. He doesn't know Jamie. Tad is going to be a perfectly wonderful father. Well, maybe so, okay? But not a husband to Brooke. Because he's going to get tired of her. Just because he's going to start missing you, I know he will. So you're saying for his best interests and mine, I should, I should beg him to come back to me. You call it what you want, all right? But either way, you win. I don't think so. I can't do that, Edmund. I just, I just can't. I mean, I saw them together. They were happy. He touched her like he used to touch me. And the thought of them making love together like all over again, I can't do that. I can't afford it. I can't have my heart broken again. I'm 
doing anything to keep Tad away from Dixie. Oh, I'm not saying that you are. I'm just saying that I'm pushing him in her direction because it is the right thing. It's right for everybody, including you, honey. Well, I guess so much for your anti-meddling pledge, right? Oh, no, 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 no. That is still on the level. I might be stubborn, but I am not stupid. I will never again do anything that would make Tad pull away from me. And I don't mean to upset you either, because you are good people. It's just that what is best for my boy comes first and foremost. And that's Dixie. Well, thank you for the straight shooting. Well, I won't take any more of your time. Before I go, would you mind if I just sneak in there and give Jamie a little Actually, good night Actually, he has kiss? a little cold. I just got him down. Oh, well, then I won't, I won't bother him. You know, Brooke, you are a wonderful mama to that boy, and you and Tad are always going to have him in common. And you'll probably each have a, a little piece of each other's hearts, too. But this situation is got Mount Vesuvius potential. Why don't we just put a cork in it before all of us get swept away in the lava flow? You've been through enough already, honey. I don't want to see you hurt anymore either. Well, I appreciate your concern. Really, I do. But you don't have to worry about me because I can take care of myself. talking to Brooke. We seem to have forgotten about her. She's why you came here. Okay. Okay. Indirectly. You seem to have backed off that subject pretty you well. You know, I've heard of a love triangle, but leave it to me to find a full-blown love square. You, you expect me to go begging and crying to Tad uh, when, when Brooke hasn't really let go of him? You can't reduce their relationship to nothing just because it's what you want to believe. They never had a relationship. He used her, and then he went back to you. That's not true. That's not what the relationship was like. I was there. I'm sorry you weren't. I saw what they had. I saw how Tad and Brooke were together before Tad and I managed to work things through. Brooke was in love with Tad, and I'm sorry, but that's the truth. some company? Oh. Welcome to Brooks. We never close. Can I come in? Sure. I've been thinking a lot about what happened tonight. As a matter of fact, I can't stop it. I told you that I would always tell you the truth. The truth is I've been thinking about Dixie too. <laughs> 